Welcome to the Sowing Hope Podcast. This is a show all about implanting hope in our hearts. I'm Bill Snyder, joined by my friend Ann DeSantis. We're glad you're here for our uplifting conversation about faith and how it sustains our hearts through all the seasons of life. Thanks for walking with us. And good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Sewing Hope Podcast. I am Bill Snyder. It's wonderful to be with you here this evening. No, where, no matter where you're listening to us or how you're listening to us, thank you so very much for joining us and being on the journey of Lent with us. This is going to be a wonderful episode, and uh, as always, I am joined by my co-host, Ann DeSantis. Ann, how are you this evening, and uh, how are you doing out there in Philadelphia tonight? Oh, I'm doing so well, Bill. And and as I say, every week now that we're in like mid-March, that I'm going to sound happier and happier as we get into the spring, because I love the warmer weather. <laughs> Me too. Yeah, yes, was... I know you're out in Wisconsin. I'm here in Philadelphia. And our wonderful, wonderful guest, Dr. Matt Smith, is out in Indiana. And we're so excited about having him on this podcast with us. Yeah, absolutely. Good evening. Thanks for having me, Ann and, and Bill. I really appreciate having the opportunity to be here with you tonight. Yeah, thanks. Yes, we're so grateful to you. You're coming to us, I believe, from Fort Wayne, Indiana. And I would love to read your bio so that people can get to know a little bit about you and the wonderful work that you're doing for so many people. So Matt Smith is the Director of Strategic Alliances at the OSV Institute for Catholic Innovation the philanthropic arm of the Our Sunday Visitor Publishing Company, and one of the oldest Catholic grant makers in the United States. The newly named OSV Institute for Catholic Innovation seeks an evolution that better embodies the values by which OSV was first founded. Archbishop Knoll founded OSV over 100 years ago using new methods and approaches to educate Catholic faithful and advance the gospel of Jesus Christ. Today, the OSV Institute for Catholic Innovation recognizes the need for a similar catalyst to cultivate thought, leadership, strategic doing, and design thinking to ultimately energize and renew the 21st century church. Matt, a former professor at the Fort Wayne-based University of St. Francis, came to the OSV Institute for Catholic Innovation in early 2020 and is responsible for managing existing relationships while generating new opportunities on a national basis with Catholic institutions, service providers, startup businesses, and Catholic ministries. Most notably, those who apply for the OSV Challenge grant making competition now in its second year. Sample interview questions, talking points are available on, okay, now that's something that we don't need to read, but uh, <laughs> ha, 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 I went too far. So thank you so much for joining us on Sewing Hope. Well, Anne, again, and Bill, thank you so much for having me. And, and Anne, that was quite a mouthful of a bio, and so you did a great <laughs> job there. Uh, I, really I was trying. <laughs> but yeah, you're, you're doing amazing things. Why don't we start out with even you as a... Uh, a Catholic husband, probably father. Um, tell us more about you. Well, I'm actually a native of Fort Wayne. Uh, grew up here, uh, went through 12 years of Catholic education, and uh, then left and got an undergraduate uh, degree in English and then a PhD in English. And I taught for three years in Chattanooga, Tennessee, at a two-year college, a community college there. I had a great experience. Um, my parents were starting to have some health problems, and so I moved back to the Midwest for two years Bloomington, Illinois, and then the position at the University of St. Francis opened up, and I was able to uh, move move to Fort Wayne back where they were uh, to help help with them a little bit. Um, I also met my wife in Bloomington, Illinois, so it was a very profitable two years, uh, mostly for me. I don't know about her, but uh, mostly for me, I'm getting there. But, uh, so, but we were able to come here, and and so I had a 17-year career at the University of St. Francis. I started there as a, a professor of English my background and, and directed the writing program. Uh, then did I chaired the Department of English and Foreign Languages, uh, was Dean of Arts and Sciences for a number of years, uh, and then for the last seven years was Vice President for Institutional Advancement 
which oversaw development, uh, alumni relations, career outreach, marketing, um, and whatever else uh, President Sister Elise Chris could uh, 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 throw my way uh, to keep me on my toes. But it was a great experience. Uh, the Order of Sisters that sponsors the Sisters of St. Francis of Perpetual Adoration, wonderful order, um, growing. Um, they were great, great to work for. And then I was lucky enough uh, to move on to OSV in the Institute. Um, and it's been an uh, interesting year. I started about a month before the pandemic, before the shutdown. And so, uh, you know, dealing with that in a new company and, and really a new industry as a whole. And so that's been a, a interesting kind of experience. It's a good experience. I mean, it was, it's something I think, you know, a lot of listeners, you and, and Bill can probably share. God always takes care of you and often puts new challenges in front of you and that, that those new challenges will uh, invigorate you. And I, I really have felt that over the last year. I've been very blessed. That's awesome. Wow. Amazing. You have such uh, a lot of experience in, in both uh, education and marketing and in your Catholic faith. And so that, that's just incredible. It, it's a really good combination, isn't it? I mean, I'm sure that you've been on quite a journey, met so many great people in all the work that you have done. And, and 2020 proved to be a challenging year, but I think you had a good year from what I could tell. And oh yeah, it's been a wonderful year. I've been, you know, um, you know, I, I got to work with a wonderful uh, boss, Sister Elise at the University of St. Francis for many years. And then moving in, uh, into the Institute, working with Jason Shanks, who I'm, I think probably a lot of your listeners will know through his work with the Institute, um, just his thought leadership and innovation. Like I said, it's been something new for me. I mean, with my background in academics and education, learning is a really important aspect for me. And so it's been a real, um, what I'll say is a, a deep dive into innovation and how to cultivate it, um, how to cultivate it in, in sort of wrapping it in the new evangelization to bring people to the church. And um, so it's been a great experience. And, and I, you know, I, I really, I, I am so thankful that it's worked out. We've been very blessed. Um, it's sort of, you know, the, the pandemic has been horrible in many ways, but it's also been a chance for me to spend a lot of time learning uh, about innovation, learning about OSV, which has actually been very fascinating. I, I honestly got to be on uh, with your listeners and you, I didn't know a whole lot about them. And, and, you know, I'd love to tell you a little just about the history, because I think, um, I, I do think that it's an interesting story that is, that in good Midwestern fashion, we don't tell often uh, enough, uh, you know, sort of that humble, uh, Midwestern, oh shucks, kind of attitude. So I see Bill. Uh, kinda, yeah. You know, we got to no get more understands. of the we, we got to get more of the brash East Coaster uh, yeah. in us. Uh, so yeah. uh, not to yeah. talk our friend in Philadelphia here. That's right. Well, I have to say that Bill was originally from my area, right, Bill? Yes. So uh, he, he's, he's a Midwesterner, Midwest. but his heart is is also over here too. <laughs> yep. And I see a little bit of both in him. I see a little bit of both. So, yeah. so yeah, please do tell us the history. We'd love to hear. I know our listeners would also love to hear. Yeah, just, a, I mean, very briefly, and it, but it, it really ties into what we're doing with the challenge now and, and the Institute's work with innovation. So um, OSV, our Sunday visitor, was founded by Father Noel at the time in 1912. And he founded it as a way to um, combat some of the, the misrepresentations of, of Catholic faith and Catholic teachings in the Midwest. So, you know, some of the, I don't know if they're apocryphal or not, but some of the stories about uh, Father Noel is he would go, um, you know, they would have tent meetings. You know, a lot of the evangelical movement would have tent meetings. And when he would go to these tent meetings and, you know, there would be some misrepresentation of the faith and Father Noel would go to talk to, back, you know, to the preachers um, but he would also tell the people who arrived, he said, if you want to hear the real story about the Catholic Church, come back the next night and I'll be here and tell you the real story. And so, again, it could be apocryphal, but it's part of the legend and, and history of, of OSV is he was sold a printer for $1 in 1912. And so he started the Our Sunday Visitor newspaper and it was a series of letters as if a friend stopped by Father Noel's house and was asking him questions about the faith. And so, you know, I know OSV has, still has the newspaper, uh, the weekly newspaper is still published 
you know, at one time it was um, one of the most popular newspapers in the United States. And actually, uh, OSB for a long time was a large publishing house. That was what it was best known as. Um, one of the things I learned is becoming a new employee was at one time uh, there was a, a, a railroad spur that went right to the warehouse. And at Christmas time and other holidays, OSB would um, take in as vendor contracts the Sears catalog. So like their Christmas catalog would be printed at OSB and then they'd ship it out right on the rails uh, from there, which I think is a funny story kind of thing like that. You know, but as, as OSB grew and diversified, and again, where it links in is Father Noel was always about on, being an entrepreneur and innovator. How can I communicate the faith outside of, of our regular church and really the truth of the faith? Um, so it's not misrepresented. So people have the opportunity to share in it. And so really always that innovative entrepreneurial spirit. You know, now what OSV does is, is probably many people know us um, by our publishing of or our printing of many of the church envelopes. There's about 17,000 parishes in the United States and OSV uh, uh, prints envelopes for about 15,000 of them. So we, we enter into many people's lives through that. We also uh, do a lot of curriculum, uh, both for uh, K through eight education and homeschool curriculum. What we've begun to do in the last oh, 15, 20 years, there was also a lot of um, online media. So we partner with some folks to, to have curriculum through online uh, venues and mediums. We also publish books, um, um, trade books, things like that, a uh, number of websites. We also have a large com component of um, what I would call parish services, church management software, website services, uh, capital campaign, marketing services. We've begun to help Catholic schools market better. Uh, we've been doing some things with some Catholic schools in the area. Um, you know, so again, sort of building on that entrepreneurial innovative spirit of Father Noel, um, Archbishop Noel, he did become a bishop and then was given the honorary title of Archbishop. Um, and building on that, really around innovation and around entrepreneurship. And so, you know, one of the things that really attracted me to me to leave a tenured position at a university, um, uh, which is sort of unheard of, and I was somewhat uh, uh, asked many questions by my colleagues was, I was really attracted to the learning culture at OSV. It were, it's really a culture of, you know, we wanna make sure that OSV is serving the church 50 years from now, 75 years from now. So what do we need to do to be on the, the cutting edge for the church to bring people to Christ? Um, and so around that, um, it goes into the story of the challenge. So um, I wanna take a breath because I've been uh, talking at you for a bit. Yeah, and, no, uh, no, I, I'm, I love hearing this because uh, first of all, I wanna just say I love OSV in so many ways. Um, one thing that I love about you guys that you've done for many years are the, the little pamphlets and yeah, and, and I have a whole bunch of them here at my house and I sometimes pick them up and say, oh my gosh, I love this author. And so for so many years, you've been doing amazing work to help to evangelize and to bring really good Catholic content to individuals and Catholic families all over the place. Well, that's really kind of you to say, Anne, and I, I appreciate that. You know, like we still publish the Priest Magazine, the Deacon Magazine, and, and some other things like that. And and again, we're always looking for ways that we can get the message out about the church in North America. Yeah, I, I am uh, very interested to hear your perspective on innovation, especially in the Catholic Church, because, you know, we, we don't hear that word an awful lot when we come into a parish setting. They're like, oh, no, we're going to continue doing the same thing the same way we've been doing this for 50 years. And we then expect a different result to happen. I, I've served on parish staffs uh, for, for many years as a youth minister, and I, I've always seen that everywhere I've gone. And so part of the reason why uh, I, I believe the Lord called me into doing this patchwork art ministry was because we just can't continue to spin the wheels and do the same thing over and over again and expect different results. It just That's the definition of insanity. So, um, you know, I would... I would love to hear your perspective because I'm sure you have, you know, doing this whole innovation challenge thing, some really uh, keen insights into, you know, how Catholics can become better innovators and and work to build the church, not just of today, but of tomorrow. 
You know, Bill, that's a that's a great question. And I appreciate that analysis. And you kind of cut to the heart of it. So, you know, kind of kind of giving you a a a little bit of a link with the history of OSB. So in 1915, the Institute, OSB Institute, uh, uh, I guess, became real within the operation because Father Noel always thought that any funds generated by OSB needs to go back to the church. So uh, OSB, is, the Institute, is not a traditional endowment. We operate out off the margin of, the, of what OSB makes. And so, it, you know, that, that, that we're, we are giving back to the church what we're able to take in. Um, and in 1970 or so, this is for all your governance junkies out there, we actually became an actual uh, institute uh, by the governance documents and all those kind of things, a little bit separate from OSB, but still part of OSB, um, if that makes any sense. And OSB is a 5013C. A lot of people don't realize that. So we refer to ourselves as a social enterprise, um, you know, trying to, to give those funds back. So um, we... We hired Jason Shanks three years ago as, as president of OSB. Um, and when he came to us, he, you know, doing traditional grant making, wonderful job supporting wonderful organizations. He halted grants for about a year and just did sort of a year. I mean, some might call it a walkabout, a sort of study tour and really immersed himself in all the things that were going on in the Catholic world to try to figure out exactly, Bill, what you were talking about and, and Anne, what you've alluded to and other and other comments and sort of, you know, what's going on in the Catholic Church and where does it need its most um, assistance? And so part of that is, you know, very data driven. I mean, it, we've all seen the numbers of, of people leaving the church, young people leaving the church, um, you know, uh, people's trust of the church, all those things. And, and so, you know, what, um, what Jason decided or what the OSB and the board kind of worked through was, um, we would have three strategic initiatives to grant to, and, and they were around the domestic church, uh, so family services, things like that, getting the domestic church, building up the church in your home, um, working with millennials and nuns, uh, you know, those that don't have faith or those that have left the faith, and then also serving our growing Hispanic population. And again, very data-driven demographic, um, you know, what is happening with the church in North America, you know, as um, we become a more diverse church and, and certainly uh, the Hispanic Latino population is, um, is growing within the church. And so how do we serve them as brothers and sisters in an in a authentic way? So for the last two years, that's what we've done our grant making, three cycles of grants. And it's been organizations that, um, again, have done wonderful work. And so last year, um, Jason uh, and the OSV Institute started the challenge, the 2020 challenge, our first challenge. As sort of a, you know, sort of a, let's see what happens with innovation. And so there were about 350 applicants in the first round, um, got down to 12 finalists, three $100,000 prizes. And what we did, and, and this is where the higher ed background and some of the assessment work I'd done in higher ed really worked out well, um, was look at the impact of our grants over the last two, two and a half years, and our investment in innovation. And what we really saw was that our grantees were doing tremendously good work, but, but Bill, they were in, and they were doing exactly kind of what you said, offering some of the same services that they had been for 30, 20, 15 years. <clears throat> Pardon me. So were they having an impact? And we thought when we looked at what sustainability and impact that our innovative challengers, innovation challengers were having, um, even just in the 12 and the nascent ideas and things like this, we thought the potential was much greater there. So we rebranded ourselves um, to the OSV Institute for Catholic Innovation. So while that you know, may seem like a minor change, it really signaled our emphasis on funding things that are innovative in the church, still within the magisterium. And we have um, put more resources into our challenge 2021, where... Um, you know, again, applications are open, so osvchallenge.com, um, but applications are still open till um, April 2nd uh, for the first round. Move people into the second round. We will have 25 semifinalists at that time. We will give grant prize money at that time to the semifinalists, a certain level. Those 25 will enter accelerator through OSV, um, where we hope to give them sort of 
spiritual formation, but also business formation. They will be with mentors. Uh, we will do a six-week accelerator, online accelerator. From those 25, uh, we will get 12 finalists. Those 12 finalists will have fi uh, prize, uh, a prize money, grant money given to them at another level. Mm -hmm. And then those 12 will compete for the three $100,000 prizes. Um, and so it's a long-winded way, Bill, of getting to, you know, what do we see as innovation in the church? And, and it's a way, one, linking back to our, our charism as OSV, back to Archbishop Knoll. He wanted to do something new. He kept trying to figure out what was going to um, evangelize, what was going to get the message out, always in new ways. The other thing that, that we really, in our, in our sort of discernment about our, grant, our own grant making was, I mean, the history of the church is about grant making, or grant making, it's about innovation. You think about hospitals, you think about schools. Uh, I mean, some things as simple as beer making, uh, pretzels, um, you know, all these kind of things, but big things like hospital systems, schools, um, a, a rash of scientific discoveries, but also things like pretzels and, and beer and things like that. But the Catholic church has been about innovation. Now, you know, without with a total frankness, I mean, the last and somewhat challenging, some of the scandals, some of the, the, but what we really think at OSV is, you know, the church needs to go on the offensive. And that, that doesn't mean, you know, in a sort of, you know, poke the chest, poke their chest, stand up and scream, but it's really to talk about, we are innovative. Let's, let's, let's share that innovation with the world. And then let's share the truth and beauty of the Catholic church. Let's find ways um, that maybe we're just not doing right now um, to, to serve our brothers and sisters and bring them to Christ. And that really, again, a very long-winded answer, as English professors might be willing to do every once in a while, <laughs> but to your answer. But it really, we thought it both both um, um, aligned with our, our charism as OSB, but also aligned, aligned with the Catholic Church as an innovator. Hmm. Yeah, I, I just love, I feel like I could listen for a long time because, as I said, I love the work that you're doing. I've always really loved wh what OSV has been doing and especially this new challenge. And, you know, we all have to keep up with innovation, all of us, whether we're Catholic or not, right? And, and if we don't, honestly, we're going to be left behind. So, well, yeah, you know, and, if that makes and, and sense. It's, you know, not only left behind, Ann, but it, it, it's also about, I mean, one, we're a you know we're a gospel church. We want people to be able to share in that, um, in in that gospel message, and so. But it's also about um, it's also about linking the heritage of the Catholic Church with what lies ahead. I mean, you don't want to lose the tradition. You don't want to lose the truth. But you have to find ways that you can reach people and serve people that make sense and that work for them. And, and like I said, just in a data-driven demographic way, we can see that perhaps the church in North America is not um, as successful as it could be. Hmm. Yeah, that, that's a good thought, you know, the, the ending part, as successful as it could be, because there's always room for improvement. And I think yeah. when we're humble enough to look at ourselves, and as you said, data-driven, look, look at the facts, right? And how can we reach those younger people who are walking away from their faith, as some people refer to them as the nuns, N-O-N-E-S, right? <laughs> Not N-U-N-S, like the, the sisters, right? <laughs> but uh, how can we reach those people? And, you know, part of also what we do with Sowing Hope um, is also the same thing, because we found that our demographic is really very uh, widespread, right, Bill? I mean, yeah. we've got people <laughs> inside and outside of the church, which is a great thing. So you're getting listeners right now that are both uh, devouted Catholics and also people who are kind of uh, on the borderline there. So um, yeah. so thank you so much for joining us on this podcast. Oh, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to share this. And, and as I said, you know, it, it's as successful as we, can, as we could be because, you know, there's so much that the church does well and there's so many ways it serves so many people. But how do we how do we amplify that, quite frankly, and how do we do it even better? I think, Ian, that was a I really appreciate your sort of uh, spinning out uh, my pontification there at the end. So I appreciate that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, and I know Bill's shaking his head there because we see each other on Zoom as we're doing this audio <laughs> podcast. Um, 
you know, we have to look at the body of the church, don't we? And we have to look at the members, people who are consider themselves churchgoers and they're at mass every week, even through the pandemic and people who have stopped going to mass during the pandemic. And then there's people who have been away even before that, right? And they haven't been in church, but consider still consider themselves Catholic. I wonder if you could talk a little bit about that because we're all of us are trying to find ways to engage people who are quote away from their faith. Um, I didn't know if you had any words to say on that and what has OSV, what is your thoughts about that? Because like you said, you're looking at the data yeah, you know, one of the things, and I'll talk about it, you know, through our challengers last year, the 12 finalists, and talk about some of those finalist projects, um, you know, some of the things that, you know, we want to fund so that they can be successful. And, and some of them will, you know, people may go to the website and say, well, how does that wrap into, you know, evangelizing or bringing people? I think of an example, we have we had one project, um, that was a technology project. And it, it really was for parish priests to be able to, it was almost like a customer relationship management, but so that they could know where people were in sacramental prep, you know, all kinds of things that could be data driven that anywhere from a parish secretary to the priest could use so that the priest could spend more time being pastoral with his parishioners as opposed to checking out who was baptized, who is this, you know, a really easy sort of parish management system, um, you know, for lack of a better word. But it allows that priest to spend more time being a pastor, why more than likely that person became a priest in the, in the first place. So, you know, that's, that's one project. One of our winners was Eden Invitation. Um, and that that was a project. Are you familiar with Eden Invitation? Yes, or? yes. We, in fact, in the foundation that I represent, the St. Raymond and Honest Foundation, our, uh, one of our priests, Father Ken, which Bill knows very well, um, he in, asked me to, he said, put this on our website, you know? <laughs> so Eden Invitation is on the St. Raymond and Honest website on our, underneath our helpful resources. Great. I mean, that's great. And, yes. you know, they're out of Milwaukee, I believe. Uh, Bill, I think uh, I think they're out of Milwaukee, and so you know, it, you know, Eden Invitation is a movement for young adult Catholics experiencing same-sex desires, and so it's really a, a safe space for those individuals who often believe the church has no space for them to talk about that in a real and authentic way within, again, the church. And so they have a hearth and porch initiative, which fosters local hubs for community and and formation and create new evangelistic, evangelistic uh, testimony videos. So, you know, something like that, that for a, a, a segment, segment of our, our population that, that may believe the church has no opening for them or no safe space for them, a, a, a organization that does provide that. Um, one of our other winners, I mean, just talking about that was the Juan Diego Network, um, mm -hmm. which, you know, serving, and, and I see Anne again, I'm on the Zoom with them, so I can see Anne shaking her head. Are you familiar with the Juan Diego Network? Or? It's funny. I mean, literally, I'm talking just this week. Uh, Father <laughs> Ken Breen, he might even be listening, uh, who's our spiritual moderator for the St. Raymond Anatis Foundation, where I'm the director. Uh, he said, put these links on our website. So, uh, so Juan Diego Net Network is also on the helpful resources for St. Raymond. See, and you knew all you knew all about the end of the <laughs> challenge. I, I didn't even need to be on. You, you're right. already That's you're right. already promoting. But you know, really, what the Juan Diego Network is 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 trying to do is distribute uh, programs for Latino Catholics, and so help evangelize them, train, pray, inspire, and bring bring Catholics back. Because you know, again, data driven, the Hispanics are the the most rapid growing population but they're also the fastest population leaving the church. And so, you know, again, how do we, how do we retain, how do we get them back um, to see the truth and beauty of the church? That's beautiful. You know, I mean, all the, all the work you're doing, I mean, I, I, I also think that, you know, just, just by the fact of the coincidence or maybe not the God incidence of it appearing on the St. Raymond Hernandez Foundation website is the <laughs> fact that, you know, here, the, the money is being put to good use. It is being used in such a way that it is reaching new organizations, new, new places so that, um, 
so that their names can be out there, so that they can innovate, so they can create, so they can get new customer base into their organization. No, and that's exactly right. You know, we talk a lot about the ideas and the concept behind it. It's unbelievably important, but equally important are the people. And, you know, that's one of the things as we're going through Challenge 2021 is really trying to get an idea of the people that are involved in these projects. One, you know, I, I think you will both you will both be sympathetic to this or empathetic to this is that innovators and entrepreneurs, sometimes it can be really lonely. And sometimes you're faced with failure on a daily basis. And so what we're also trying to do is get the innovators connected with each other, build a, a, a tribe of innovators so they have that support. You know, one of the things that we found with the challengers last year and doing some you know, assessment afterwards was they found that one of the most valuable parts of the whole um, program, you know, was that they were able to connect with other folks going through similar experiences. We also, in the accelerator that we offered last year, we would bring in entrepreneurs that had been successful to talk to them. They were also given mentors um, in, field, in their own fields uh, to help them, you know, oh yeah, I know you're probably struggling with marketing at this point, or, you know, what tech, you know, what, what development system should I use? Or, or, you know, just things like that. Or, you know, I have a wife, I have a husband, I have children. How do I make sure that I'm not working 22 hours a day and ignoring that part of my life? How do I make sure that I'm not ignoring the spiritual part of my life? You know, to, and not to use a trite term because balance is a, I think a contextual thing, but how do I make sure that all the parts of my life um, are in harmony? You know, and we found that that was as equally as important as getting the, the concept of the business right or the nonprofit. And so, you know, it's really, truly, as we get more into the innovation and, and things like this, it's about the people. And so we're really trying to cultivate those people um, that, that can be successful. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, you know, we can analyze and, and look at the data, but at the end of the day, right, it's always about the individual human beings. And that's who we're trying to, and that we're trying to evangelize them. And what does that mean? That means that the church and Jesus Christ has a relevance in their lives, right? And that it's not just something like a checkbox that grandma Grandma goes to church on Sundays and wants her grandchildren to go to mass, right? And get their sacraments. It's not about that. It's about making Jesus Christ and the church something of real and true importance, right? Well, it's, yeah. And about encountering that love. I mean, the love of yes. God and of Christ. I mean, it's about that encounter. Um, and again, I mean, I, it's also about building that community with your, your fellow travelers. I mean, to, to know that you're not alone, you know, whether it's innovation or whatever you're doing as a, you know, um, we had a, we had a group of uh, the women uh, that were part of the 12 challengers. You know, we did a, a male and a, a, a female sort of spiritual development because there are just different things that go on, different pressures. A number of those women were mothers, young mothers, um, different challenges with that, trying to start a business or start a nonprofit. Um, you know, and so it was very interesting to hear their stories and how important that was for them to connect. And then there were some very pragmatic things that happened out of that, too. I mean, in the sense of there were some challengers that were experts in X, Y or Z, and they could help other challengers with with whatever they were um, you know, dealing with in that in that arena. So that was very good, too. And again, what we want to keep doing through this challenge um, and this year trying to be pronounced is, you know, so I've talked to a lot of the folks that have had questions about 2021. So, you know, should I apply is this idea? And I, you know, I always tell people, this is not an endorsement or a discouragement about your idea, but, you know, trying to get people even that round one application is just to get your idea down, you know, and to start to think about what might be, who am I serving with this? You know, those kind of things. And so we've tried to tell people, you know, there, it's a competition, so there will be people that will move on, but every step of the way, we're asking you a little bit more to push yourself a little bit more. So even if you don't make it to the finalist, or even if you're not a winner, we want the challenge to be valuable for each and every person that, that takes part in it. 
Yeah, I think I think that's a really smart idea too, Matt, because there's so many people out there that 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 are faithful that do have these ideas that do have this um, calling from God to 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 reach out and do ministry. I mean, you know that that calling doesn't seem to be stopping. You know, like you know, like and, and it's never stopped. You know, like th- th- that's part of being Catholic. And so when when you look at that, like, all right, the the one thing that kind of inhibits that, especially in modern culture, is our society and the way that our society is organized with all these different, you know, facets of it. So b- having to make sure that your business is a sound business and it, and it has a good business plan is very important to just survive in the 21st century. Like, like you know, whereas maybe in the 16th century or, or something else, you didn't have to have all of these different check boxes checked. Do, do I have a website? Do I have this? Do I have that? No, I think you went outside and just kind of started talking and people followed well, you. You were hoping that barbarians did not attack your city that day. That was, uh, yeah, that was <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, so, you know, I, but, but, but I think that's a great way to approach it because then you've got, all right, now, Here's the business plan. Here's this. Here's that. All right, now we can move forward, and we've got these. Uh, we're we're meeting the demands that our society currently uh, demands of us to to uh, evangelize effectively. Well, and and Bill and Ann, another part of this too is along with the um, innovation tribe, we're also trying to um, speak to an investor tribe. You know, um, in in even in this this one year of me working with the with the institute, you know, in talking with other leaders of foundations and other folks that work with foundations, um, and Anne, you may have this conversation often within your uh, realm of of vocation. You know, foundations and and philanthropists are looking to make an impact. They want to know that whatever dollars they're giving out is doing good. And so, you know, what we're trying to do is, is raise the profile of, of many of these organizations and get them in front of folks that may be able to support them, that want to, um, you know, want to see these ideas succeed. And so, you know, we're also trying to work with other investors. Um, you know, obviously, we've, we've, we've invested, you know, our foundation's money, our institute's money into this. And we're trying to get other folks to say, hey, this is important for the church. How can we help you? How can we do this? Maybe around an individual organization. Maybe it's around uh, the challenge. You know, all kinds of things that we're trying to work with, bringing other Catholic uh, philanthropists and foundations together. You know, last year of our twelve challengers, probably six were nonprofits and six were for profit. So we've also done some things with with sort of helping uh, those for profit uh, ideas understand what equity investment might look like, what valuation might look like. You know, really trying to help them understand um, what is scalability, how might you scale things, and so what might work as a great idea in your parish isn't going to be sustainable for the long run. And so how do you scale that? What does that mean? What do you market? What kind of capital needs may you need? Which all gets, you know, very business-like in some ways, but it's also about how can you successfully spread the, the uh, message of Christ through whatever your ministry is or through your program, through your software, through your creative endeavor, whatever that may be. And that's, you know, one of the things just to get across to your your listeners, a lot of the questions I get is, well, I'm thinking of X. Does that fit in the innovation? And, you know, at this point, the second year of the innovation challenge, we are still casting our net as wide as possible. Um, We don't have any preconceived notion of what the innovative idea around X or Y or Z may be. So, you know, we are looking for things in Catholic education. We are looking for things in technology. We are looking for creative endeavors. We're looking for it all, business ideas, whatever it may be. Yeah, I have to say, um, Matt, even before we met, this is funny, as soon as you put that on social media, I got a message back from somebody at your office that I was the first person to apply for the St. Raymond Anatis Foundation. And I'll just add for people who don't know us is that we do spiritual accompaniment for families in crisis and families affected by divorce and separation. So that's what we do. We offer that spiritual accompaniment. And she said to me, oh, you're the first to apply. 
So uh, I don't know where that'll go, but uh, <laughs> I just wanted to put it out there that I, I jumped on as soon as I said, oh my gosh, I have to do this right away. That's great, Ann. I'm, I'm sorry to say it does not give you any bonus points. I, uh, very glad. <laughs> I figured, I figured. And I have to mention another beautiful, wonderful nonprofit is, of course, Patchwork Heart Ministry. Uh, right here, but Bill Snyder with being the founder and me being part of this podcast. So, uh, hey, who knows? Who knows? You never know. Right? No, and that's, I mean, truly, you know, sometimes it's just that one word of encouragement, that one leap of faith for someone to take an idea. And, you know, we had one of our challenges, this is not an uh, exaggeration, was a sort of back of napkin idea that she had sketched out and put it into the round one and made it all the way to the finals. Um, it was something that she was very passionate about. She was very coachable, uh, really wanted to learn how to get this idea operationalized, wonderful idea. And so, you know, I really want to encourage, uh, I, I want to encourage your listeners. I mean, I've talked to a number of people really where it seemed like they just wanted someone to say, go ahead and take that chance. And so go ahead and take that chance. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Definitely, and you know, I that you know that's also a little bit scriptural too, right? I mean, you know, uh, Peter gets out of the boat; he does. Uh, so, so I think for folks out there uh, that are that are listening, you know, and and I know we have a lot of different uh, you know Catholic pastors and, and ministries that uh, occasionally listen to our podcast. So, if there is an idea that you have out there, you know. Take take the first step, knowing that there is a net here uh, for for you to you know fall into with with o with the OSV Innovation Challenge because you know these this this entire mission here is to help uh, you know you you be secure in that, not just you know worry about stepping out on these waves and start sinking. No, there's going to be somebody there to lift you out and go, okay, when you're sinking, all right, here we are. We're, we're going to help you walk through this process. We're going to help you uh, take the next step. It might be scary, but but we're going to help you through it. And and I think that that's, you know, a, a, a beautiful thing you're, you know, really working on, Matt. And I think the other thing too is it encourages people. I think it encourages people in the pews because I know we have a lot of people that are just, ordinary Catholics that may they may not consider themselves innovators and never will but 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 it takes that to the next level in their own faith journey too because it's saying all right you know what 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 chances am I willing to take for 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 the church what chances am I willing to take to evangelize the next person on the bus today you know and and seeing that uh, pushing people to become the best version of themselves to steal Matthew Kelly's line uh, is is just something that I think you guys are doing, and it's such a beautiful thing to see. You know, Bill, one of the points that you brought up in there, and and Anne, I, I will get and give you kudos for being the first application in there, but you know, is <laughs> I, I really want to encourage. Um, you know, a lot of times people think innovation entrepreneurs, they're sort of solitary individuals doing their own thing. But, you know, what I would also want to encourage is folks who are in parishes or diocesan offices or, or large nonprofits, uh, not large nonprofit, church nonprofits. If you have an innovative idea within your ministry or something that you think might work, go ahead and apply. This isn't just for people. This isn't just for startups, though. You know, we don't want it. This, these aren't capacity building grants or prizes like that where you can scale up. But if you have something within the within your heart, and you you know you have the permission of your pastor, of your bishop, or of your you know leader, go ahead and apply. See if that that is because we will we're considering that too. You don't have to be like I said that solitary uh, entrepreneur by themselves or a team of entrepreneurs and innovators. We want those too, but we also want those people that that may be in um, you know different parts of the church that that have always said. You know, this could make what I do or the the way that we serve people better. Let us know about that. Yeah, thank you for saying that because I think that's an important aspect that, you know, it could be someone new. It could be somebody that has a great idea within their organization that, hey, if we did this, we could really reach more people. This could be a great project. So if you're out there listening and you're a nonprofit or you're working for a church or an individual or whatever, an author who could be whatever, you know, I mean, there's so many different variances of who these people are, right? Uh, do apply. 
tell as we're nearing not quite there but nearing toward the end of the show almost and in, in within 10 15 minutes or so uh tell us how they apply so um where they would start with osvchallenge.com osvchallenge.com is the website and there you can find the application information a timeline a frequently asked question sheet and then there's a contact button if you still have further questions um your question will eventually end up to me probably. Um, so, you know, just go to osvchallenge.com, take a look at the materials there, um, and then, you know, submit your application. And again, we have till April 2nd uh, for round one to be open, um, and then we'll move people into round two, um, semifinalist, and then finalist. Wow, that's exciting, it really is. So when does it all wrap up? Like when will people know, like at the end of the day, quote, when will they know who won and everything like that? Well, you know, innovation never stops, Anne, but, uh, <laughs> uh, but the contest will, we will give checks out. Um, yeah. So the challenge will. So it will end with a demo day. It'll culminate in a demo day with the 12 finalists. And we're hopeful that the demo day will be in person. We had to go virtual with our first one last year, um, which went fine, but we'd like to bring the people together uh, September 18th will be, um, and we'll, as, as we get closer to that event, uh, OSV will publicize that event. And, you know, you know, one of the things too, Anne and, and Bill, as we move along this, you know, maybe if you want to check in in a couple of months, where are we at? What are we doing? Yeah. You know, maybe bring on semifinalists or, you know, so I, oh, and again, to. that's just an idea, but you know, that September 18th is again, we want to make this about the challengers. It's not about OSV. It's about these challengers and about these 12 ideas and these 12 people, you know, what are they showing the world? And so uh, we're very excited about that. And we're very excited that we have the potential to have a in-person event. We'll knock on wood and whatever else we have to do to, to make that happen. <laughs> definitely. Yeah. I think that's a great idea. We, we definitely, I, you, you can have our answer now. <laughs> We'd love to have the, uh, challengers on and talk with them. I mean, I think that that's oh, yeah. you know, awesome. Oh, I'd um, love to. They, because, you know, again, that that can be another way uh, for them just to spread the message. I, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a very firm believer uh, just because I, I, I took, you know, my, my undergraduate in uh, communication and TV radio production in, in particular, that media um, is, is, is such a needed thing. And it's a needed thing to tell accurately the truth and give people a platform you know it, me, media is a platform it's not it's you know for people to share unbiased stuff and so uh, i i really 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 firmly believe that uh, and 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 to spread the truth so when you can spread the truth of the faith spread the truth of the gospel um and and have some fun doing it through uh some great stories of innovation gosh i think that's a great idea and um, we, we'd be happy to, you know, continue to support and help, uh, OSV. I mean, just, this has been so awesome, Matt. I really appreciate, um, you know, all your, all your time and, and just being with us, uh, tonight and, uh, sharing with us this, this great challenge for people to really, uh, to really live up and, and step up to the plate, you know? Uh, that, that's the other thing. Maybe you just want to comment on, comment on as we wrap up. You know, is you know we need people to step up in in, in the Catholic Church and fill the 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 gap. You know, you talked a lot earlier about you know how how parts of the church might be lacking, and and, and we the only way to do it is to step up, right? So um, just just maybe share with us a little bit about the challenge us to step up in, in the final. Well, months. and I really think it's it's the challenge of, as I said, um, being on the offensive and not to use it in, you know, sort of the martial terms, but to to use it in the term of to be open to that challenge and to be open um, to sharing the beauty and truth. I mean, again, I think um, we may have become a, a little bit defensive about things as a, as a church and as a people. Um, you know, and, and again, there's been some hard years recently and for a variety of reasons, but, but again, we have such a wonderful message and we have the truth and we have, I mean, our, our church has two over 2000 years, um, of heritage that we can share with people. And so I think that the stepping up part is, you know, is it enough just to go to mass every Sunday? Is it enough, 
uh, you know, to, to say your rosary every week or those kind of things. Well, you know, what, where else are your gifts leading you? Where else, um, where else can they take you? And, and again, what we're really looking for is to, to make a community, a tribe of innovators, of entrepreneurs that can support each other um, as they work through. And, and again, part of this is we realize at OSV that, you know, not every idea is going to flourish, but we really hope that they do. But we know that we'll be seeding some ideas that will flourish and that will have an impact uh, in a positive way for the church and for the world. And so that's really that stepping up. I mean, I think that we are, what you're alluding to Bill, is, and, and I would challenge your listeners, you know, again, a lot of folks are very nervous. Oh my gosh, I don't want to put myself out there. I can't take another rejection email or letter, but you know what, just articulating your idea. Okay. Maybe so it doesn't go beyond round one or two of the OSV challenge, but maybe you refine that and you learn from that and next year you apply or there's another foundation or there's uh, you find out that there's another ministry that's doing something very similar and you start to connect with them you know there's there's so many things that can happen by taking that first step yeah oh yeah absolutely i agree uh and i'm so glad we had you on this show it's been so interesting and great to meet you and, and I would love to have you back again on Sewing Hope. And like you said, maybe some of the winners this coming year. And is there Yeah, anything- we would love to do that. I would, lo- I mean, yeah. we want to, we want to, um, you know, sort of uh, give them a lift in their profile. But, you know, I love the work that you, you and Bill do, Anne, and, and that planting hope in hearts. I mean, I love that, that theme. And, and, you know, I really appreciate your giving me the opportunity, the platform to share this message and this challenge with folks. And, you know, I I thank you for your work and thank you for having me tonight. And uh, it's been a lot of fun. I mean, I hope uh, maybe somewhere and someday we'll meet for real, but, uh, uh, you know, uh, but, um, but I mean, one of the beauties of technology is that we can do this without being in a studio, um, you know, in Milwaukee or, uh, you know, uh, in the suburbs of Philadelphia or the wilds of Northeast Indiana, but, uh, uh, you know, uh, any yeah. of those things. No, I'm very thankful and grateful for you having me uh, on your show, Bill and Ann. So thank you. Oh, absolutely. Oh, God bless. God bless. Thank you so much. Please do come back again, Dr. Matt Smith. Yeah, absolutely, folks. And I want to uh, remind you all that uh, you can sign up for that OSV challenge at very simply OSV challenge. Dot com. Uh, and of course, uh, folks, uh, like our ministries, follow our ministries as well. If you're a first-time listener to the program, know that you can uh, follow our ministry at uh, patchworkheart.org. And you can find us and this podcast anywhere. Podcasts are streamed by simply searching for Patchwork Heart Radio. So you do that, and um, we join you each and every Tuesday and Thursday, 6 p.m. Eastern, live but until then keep beating to your catholic heart and sowing hope into broken hearts thanks for listening to this episode of sowing hope on patchwork heart radio for more information about this podcast and our ministries visit our websites patchworkheart.org and andesantis.com you can also follow and interact with us on twitter at pwh ministry or andesantis2
a brand new in-depth monthly video series featuring engaging Catholic speakers who will challenge you to live your life abundantly. For only $25 a month, you will receive a personal monthly mission, including three full-length inspirational talks that build upon a new theme each month. Sign up for the Discover Your Mission tier at patreon.com slash patchworkheartministry today. Hello, everyone. It is Al Smith here, the Pipe Padre, and I want to welcome you to this edition of Hungry for More. Uh, we are in the season of Lent, and we're over halfway uh, through this very holy time of the year. And I know many people are looking for pilgrimages, parish missions. Uh, they want to finish well. And so I'm going to have my good friend, Shabel Reish from uh, Perusia Media in Australia. And he has a Lenten pilgrimage that they're putting on that I believe everyone will want to sign up for. Uh, and again, it has a number of well-known names. I won't give them all away yet, uh, but we're going to talk about the Lenten pilgrimage. So uh, let's begin with prayer as we always do. And I will call upon my good friend uh, in heaven, St. Teresa of Avila, to uh, give us words of encouragement. So I'd ask my producer, Kent Kohoski to bring up on the screen this beautiful prayer. And uh, please join me in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let nothing disturb you. Let nothing frighten you. All things are passing. God never changes. Patience obtains all things. Nothing is wanting to him who possesses God. God alone suffices. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I want to uh, bring onto the screen now our good friend from down under, uh, Shabel Reish uh, from Perusia Media. And uh, again, Shabel, it's always good to have you on the program because you always bring to the table uh, some great content, some great programs. And I know we'll be talking about your latest endeavor, uh, the uh, Lenten pilgrimage. So uh, Shabel, welcome back to Hungry for More. Mm -hmm. Thanks for having me, Alan. It's always great to be with you um, and loving the work that you're doing as well over there on the other side of the world. Yes. And I think we have the same passion for bringing souls to Christ. And um, mm. again, we are missionary in spirit. And it's funny how um, our apostolate at Fiat Ministry Network uh, reaches over into Australia and your apostolate in Australia reaches over into America That's and right. all over the world. So um, again, we're getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere. And, um, and we have to realize that we all have worldwide audiences now. And uh, I think anybody that does their uh, statistical reports starts to see that uh, podcasts and programs are listened to in Europe, South America, uh, again, um, down under, um, mm -hmm. I'm amazed that uh, these little countries still have technology and still tune into our programs. And so I know you have a great deal of experience with a worldwide audience because these pilgrimages that you've been offering um, usually have a hundred countries represented. So uh, let's, let's talk a little bit about uh, your upcoming pilgrimage. And it is what we call the Lenten pilgrimage. And so uh, for our regular viewers who have followed us with the Advent pilgrimage and the Rosary pilgrimage and the Pentecost pilgrimage, um, let's, let's talk a little bit about this Lenten pilgrimage. So uh, please enlighten us. Thank you, Alan. Um, you're right. Uh, Lenten pilgrimage is, is on, underway. We, we launch on March 21. Uh, it's going to be a two week pilgrimage this time. It's not going to be uh, the whole Lent. And so we are already past or up to halfway through Lent. And when we decided this, we were thinking, OK, uh, at the Advent time, there was the obvious question, are you going to come around for Lent? And so let's do it. But as we were planning, we thought, well, Lent's a long time. It's a, it's a good seven weeks when you add up uh, from Ash Wednesday all the way right up to Easter. 
um, six and a half to seven weeks. And uh, a daily video might be a bit much. We're thinking whether or not we do a, a weekly uh, thing. And um, But then uh, this idea of a 14-day Stations of the Cross, but in the last two weeks of Lent, we thought that's brilliant because there's so much for Lent this year. Praise be to God. Um, it's great to see so many great initiatives um, from what EWTN is doing, Augustine Institute doing, what you are doing yourself, um, many, many other great uh, apostolates out there um, doing these Lenten um, initiatives and, and programs. And we thought, okay, let's not reinvent the wheel and sort of be more noise for people and, and sort of make it harder to choose. Why don't we wait till the back end of Lent when we, we ramp things up and, um, and, and do the stations and so we're very blessed to have Steve Ray as the MC guiding us through the Stations of the Cross every day. But in addition to that, Steve Ray is accompanied by 15 other speakers from around the world giving a 10-minute reflection on Lent, a different aspect of Lent. So whether it's on almsgiving or sacrifice, on, on, on suffering, um, on offering things up, on uh, you know, our destiny, where we've come from, remember, man, that you are dust and to dust you shall return, uh, all, all these great uh, powerful themes um, that we hear about in Lent, and we hope that it will inspire people as we prepare for the greatest feast uh, in the Catholic uh, season, uh, the, the, the feast of Easter, the resurrection of our Lord. Yes, and I think, um, you know, as far as scheduling is concerned, I think it's perfect because I've been giving, uh, you know, Lenten missions for close to 10 years, and uh, no one wants to hear uh, a Lenten mission at the beginning of Lent. They all love to have it kind of uh, fall around on Holy Week and um, yes. <laughs> or, you know, Palm Sunday or something like that, because it's like Christmas, you know, do we do our Christmas shopping a month early or do we do it at the last minute? So uh, it's true. Christmas and Easter are very similar as far as coming to the table. We we sometimes come to the table late or at the last minute. So I think this is perfect that you're uh, doing it in the last two weeks of the Lent, of Lent. And again, who better to have as a host than Steve Ray? <laughs> like um, yeah. he just, again, not only is a Bible scholar, um, I know that um, he's been to the Holy Land many times and he gives uh, retreats on a regular basis. And so uh, he'll be able to unpackage the Stations of the Cross in a way I think that uh, many of us, uh, we don't really understand the Holy Land, but I'm sure he'll plug us in uh, so beautifully. And tell me a little bit about your relationship with Steve Ray, because he's been uh, lending his um, wisdom to the Perusia Network for quite some time now. So uh, tell us a little bit about your relationship with Steve Ray. Yeah, um, I guess uh, it started from uh, when his famous uh, cassettes and CDs were out um, with St. Joseph Communications. Um, it goes back to Terry Barber. So Terry Barber from California who founded St. Joseph Communications. He um, was responsible for, for duplicating these talks um, and getting them out there. So very early on in the Perusia um, ministry and apostolate, we discovered Steve Ray alongside Scott Hahn um, and Tim Staples. So those those were sort of the first three names that we were interacting with. And of course, Archbishop Fulton Sheen was a major uh, one there um, as well, as far as um, listening to those talks. And, and this was, um, yeah, a good 16, 17 years ago um, when Perusia was founded. And it was on the back of her hearing Steve Ray that I just wanted to get to know him. Uh, we had our first uh, tour with Tim Staples uh, about 11 years ago to Australia and Steve uh, uh, tapped me on the shoulder online, so to speak, and, and just said, uh, I wonder who else, uh, who, I'd love to go to Australia one day, hint, hint. <laughs> and that's how it started and we were thinking about him and uh, it was like the Holy Spirit brought us together and we um, connected and, and in, in 10 years ago, 11 years ago, in 2010, uh, Steve Ray came out with his wife, Janet, and uh, also with... Um, uh, Deacon uh, Alex Jones and his wife, uh, may he rest in peace. Uh, so Steve was a uh, very instrumental in the conversion of um, Alex Jones, and it's a powerful testimony. A former Pentecostal pastor who became Catholic, and when he became Catholic, half his congregation joined him. And Steve Ray was very, very instrumental in that whole process. But we hit it off right from there. He came. We toured across the country together, and then we just stayed in touch um, over the years. And um, we're planning a, a trip to the Holy Land together and, um, and, you know, he would allow us to distribute his resources. We had a, um, an arrangement with Steve directly. Um, and then uh, COVID hit and then he had to cancel uh, all of his trips and, and 
bus loads and bus loads were cancelled and um, it's you know shattering for him because that's his livelihood now going to the Holy Land uh, you know over 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 six seven eight times a year and um, you know he's been there well over 150 times I understand almost 200 times um, so he's an expert in this in this and we've I guess we've really hit it off over this uh, um, lockdown period he's been home and available and all these requests when he was always too busy finally he had time and uh, we got him uh, over the last year uh, to do a virtual um, pilgrimage if you like every month we've been going through his footprints of god series and he's been featured in all of our um, pilgrimages and, and talks and conferences and he comes on the perusia podcast and we did lots and lots of uh, interviews together so we just really gone from strength to strength and Absolutely love what he does, his passion for the Lord, his wife, and then his family. He's passed it on um, very successfully, thanks be to God, to his children and his grandchildren. So it's great to see now Steve's uh, legacy living on. Yes. And again, he's just a a beautiful man. I've actually shared the stage with him. Uh, There was an event in Toronto, Canada, and um, uh, he was the headliner and I was the opening act, but it was great to uh, share the stage with uh, Steve Ray. And I learned a great deal uh, spending that day with him. And um, I think this is what I find is that he's a real person who uh, just somehow uh, is, he's very relatable, very relatable. And of course, uh, a courageous journey to convert from his faith, um, you know, the faith he was practicing as the yes. uh, evangelical to of course, becoming a Catholic. And so, um, again, Crossing the Tiber, I think he, um, you know, wrote that book years ago, and he has brought many uh, souls to the Catholic Church. And so, a great testimony. But again, his love for the Holy Land, his love for understanding the holy sites. uh, I'm really looking forward to this uh, pilgrimage, because, um, you know, I think this is where he'll be able to unpackage a beautiful story uh, as he shares the stations. And so uh, we had put up on the screen, of course, the, the website to visit and uh, so that people can sign up for the pilgrimage. But um, again, with uh, Steve Ray, he will uh, address us each day, I'm imagining, with a, a short uh, presentation. And uh, you had mentioned that there were other speakers that uh, will be giving, um, you know, reflections of what Lent means to them, some other traditions. Um, Tell us a little bit about uh, some of those people that are uh, going to be sharing these stories, because I think this is the beauty of your pilgrimages, is that you bring in such a variety of speakers who, uh, you know, come from different walks of life. And I think that's what appeals to uh, the group at large, because I know that you usually have, I think it's about 40,000 uh, pilgrims that sign up for your um, activities. And so I'm sure that there'll be tens of thousands that will sign up for this uh, pilgrimage. But um, let's talk a little bit about uh, some of those other talks, because I think everybody's looking for a little bit of something. So uh, I'd like to know sure. about that. Yeah, thank you. Um, well, first and foremost, I mean, Steve, pulling it all together at Station of the Cross, if anyone's heard of his talk, it was the CD of the month, actually, for the Augustine Institute Lighthouse Talks. Um, in uh, this month and uh, uh, that was such a powerful presentation we said couldn't wouldn't it be great to get that on on video so Steve was generous enough to be able to do that break it up in in 10 to 15 minute um, reflections per station and we're including a 15th one the resurrection of Christ so we're going for 15 straight days um, and that's Sunday the Sunday before Palm Sunday right up until Easter Sunday morning those in uh, in Canada and America it's actually Saturday night, so the vigil, um, you'll finish on the Easter vigil, so which is it's actually quite nice uh, uh, on your end there. So we, we had to try cater for the world's uh, time zones, and I think we, we, we've, we've found a balance. Uh, so some will, will watch the last video uh, Easter morning and some will see it on Easter vigil. So um, it, it's beautifully uh, placed, and Steve Ray has done them. They're pre-recorded, and we'll be releasing them one a day for 10, 10 minutes a day with Steve. But then in addition to Steve, we've got a second video uh, each day, and that's going to be a, a, a random reflection. So it's on anything on Lent. It's not just on, on, on the passion, but it's actually on anything to do with the whole season. So we've got uh, the favourites again, like Deacon Harold Burke Sivers. Uh, we've got Sonia Corbett. We've got Dr. Edward Shree. We've got uh, Matthew Leonard um, from Next Level Academy. We've got uh, Paula from the Homeschooling Network. We've got yourself, Alan as well um, sharing, which is very powerful. We've got our locals like uh, Robert Haddad, 
um, Dr. Robert Haddad, we've got Dr. Uh, Deacon Peter Pelican. Uh, he was a Pentecostal pastor once and is now a deacon in the Catholic Church. Praise be to God. Um, powerful speakers, Father John Flutter, and the list goes on. It's, it's been such a, a beautiful blessing. And, of course, uh, I can't forget Bill Snyder, who's from Patchwork Heart Ministries, who, who does appear and, and partner with you guys uh, over there. And, and that's I discovered him through you guys. So um, he's um, co-hosting with us as well, Patchwork Heart Ministries, and they're doing wonderful work as well. And, and of course, EWT and um, are also going to be partnering in a way where they'll be promoting this as well across their platform. So we are very excited on this one because it's not as long as the other. So it's, it's very um, much concentrated in those last two weeks of Lent, which hopefully what would it would mean is that we've been primed and we're ready to enter into a deeper um, experience here and where we're going through the passion of Christ. And uh, I, I think it's going to be unlike any other uh, where we're journeying on a daily basis with very powerful speakers, uh, some of the best communicators in our faith. And I'm just excited for what's, what's happening. Um, and we're, we're also um, doing this uh, in, in a brand new platform as well. So I'm uh, happy to talk about that next. Right. Yeah. And I think one thing I will say is that uh, when it comes to Christmas, I think we've had lots of different, um, I want to say, uh, suggestions made to us. Uh, because again, there's so many different countries and they all have their different traditions. But when it comes to Lent and Easter, um, a lot of times we don't get those suggestions. Uh, we all just kind of go through the motions and uh, we wait for Holy Week to come and we get quiet and uh, very somber. But uh, yet, you know, we don't really talk about, uh, you know, kind of sharpening our game or whatever how i'm trying to say the right words of um, make it the best lent ever and so i don't think we are as zealous during lent as we are sometimes at christmas so i'm really looking forward to the advice that these speakers are going to give and uh, you know speaking of these speakers i've been seeing a number of them show up on your newest platform of what I like to call Perusia World, or some people call it a mighty network. And so uh, I know I've been blessed that I've been having uh, a great deal of traffic that have come uh, through because we've been sharing Bishop Sheen on the mighty network uh, for quite some time. And uh, again, it's nice to see that Perusia World is really expanding and uh, the people that are signing up are we're getting uh, up there in good numbers. And so uh, very encouraged to see a vibrant Catholic community um, come together to be fed. And I think that's what you do so well in your mighty network is that um, there is a lot of great content there. So let's, let's talk about um, how this came about and how people can sign up uh, to the Perusia World Mighty Network and what they can kind of expect. Thank you. Yes, um, we are very excited. I mentioned it when we first uh, started this platform on your show uh, last time I was on, and it was just begun. It was just very much a soft launch, if you like, and it was just sort of testing the waters. We weren't sure um, if we were going to use the platform. We just wanted to sort of test it and see what it was like, and it was there in the background um, as part of the Advent pilgrimage. Um, and then over the over our summer, your winter, um, we were yeah looking at it closely, and, and you know we had our moderators in, um, speakers come in, different apostolates. And then slowly we, we, we were using this Lenten pilgrimage to really launch the platform as well. So on the back of the pilgrimage, the way to access the videos is going to be directly through this mighty network. It's, and we call it the Perusia world. So anything within the Perusia world, all of our partners, um, speakers are coming together. And what we're excited about, it's a, it's a, a direct alternative to any of the, the mainstream social media platforms. Um, thanks to mighty networks, it's a, it's a platform that allows you to create your own community. And, uh, and we've seen our, our, our friends at Smart Catholics do a great job in, in nurturing uh, upcoming speakers and, and, and building a network of Catholics there. And what we thought at Perusia World, why don't we um, take, take that idea and, and then um, develop it in, in our own way in the sense that let's promote now all these developed um, apostolates that, are, that have been there for years, some of the biggest names in the Catholic world. And and actually pull them together. And so then lay people can be familiar with what's going on in the church. Let's face it, uh, people are not uh, aware of all the great things happening in the Catholic church. All we see are the negative headlines in the media. And, uh, and then we're, we're actually on, on another serious level, we're getting, we're getting Catholic channels on, on certain platforms closed down um, just like that overnight for, for, 
for certain uh, claims and, and we can't even express our Catholic faith um, these days. So uh, we need a, a place that allows us to still be relevant and it reach um, as many souls as possible. And, and so this network is going to allow us to do that. Um, and what's exciting is within the network, you can have many groups. There's no limit to how many groups you can have. So if you're a, a Archbishop Fulton Sheen fan, then there is a group um, for Bishop Sheen today. And thanks to you, Alan, uh, we've got that group and it's wonderful. Uh, it's great to see the videos there being released and uh, it's just amazing. So I encourage if people joined up just for that group, uh, it's worth it. Um, and but there's many other groups that we've got. Deacon Harold in there. Steve Ray is in there as well. Um, uh, Dr. Ed Tree. We've got uh, uh, Matthew Leonard already signed up. Sonia Corbett. And, and, and many of these speakers um, uh, are coming on board. And we've invited them to share what they share elsewhere, but just sort of replicate it here. So that way we have sort of a, a hub, a one-stop shop, if you like, um, on all the good things that are Catholic. And um, people can experience uh, all these ministries uh, and, and apostolates that are out there in one place. And you can even directly speak to these speakers. Uh, they may not always be available, but they are out there. And if you want to connect with them, you've got an opportunity to do that. And that's what's quite exciting about the way this is set up. And so we're really going to put some effort into this and really grow it. We've already closed on a thousand people. And, and I think we're going to, uh, ex, you know, really go beyond that. Well, and truly um, we'll be in the, in the thousands, if not tens of thousands um, over the next few months. And so I am very excited about seeing this platform really grow uh, strength to strength as, as the days tick by and, and more and more people discover it. And uh, I invite everyone to come on. It's completely free. There's no money to be exchanged, no credit card, none of that. It's just completely free. It's an alternative to our, our usual uh, social media platforms. And, and so why not give it a shot? And you know that uh, everyone on there are Catholic and they're all searching to link uh, with other fellow Catholics around the world. And that's, that's our goal, right? We're universal, the Catholic church is a universal church. And so here's a chance to connect to the universal church. Yes. And what I try to explain, because I've had many of my, um, you know, people who follow me on social media, they've been asking me about uh, Perusia World. And I say, you know, let's just say that it's been, uh, it's got beautiful filters in the sense of uh, Facebook can be very toxic. And mm. uh, not only that, it's, there's too many distractions. And uh, what we've done uh, at you know, Perusia World is that we've kind of taken away all the junk and it's yes. uh, what I just call pure gold. And so, uh, you know, I'm a member and of course I signed up quite a while ago and it's just so nice to say, okay, I, there's 70 groups right now and I can go into Steve Ray's content and enjoy everything that Steve Ray is posting. I can then go visit Deacon Harold Silver's uh, a group and see what Deacon Harold's up to. I can then go to Matthew Leonard's, um, uh, you know, uh, page and uh, enjoy his content. Uh, the Catholic Man Show, uh, again, the Catholic Toolbox, all of these things. So it's kind of nice. It's like going to the mall. And that's how I kind of say to it is that it's clean, it's neat, it's really organized. And you go through the Catholic mall and you can tuck into the store you want to bring. And I mean, like I say, there's no pressure. There's no, they're not, um, uh, you know, doing this where they're saying, oh yeah, come on in, you know. Uh, but it's this whole idea of content uh, to be able to say, I'm interested in Catholic homeschooling. Uh, I'm going to go into that group and I can meet like-minded people in the Catholic homeschooling group. I can meet like-minded people in the, um, um, you know, again, sometimes, and I, I, our producer can't try to scroll the groups, and and this is what's beautiful about the groups is there's so many of them, and you can have your catechesis, you can have, again, just an opportunity to meet like-minded Catholics from all over the world. So, uh, I like to say it's been filtered. It's like uh, fine, it's fine press coffee where you just you get all the good stuff. You know, it's. Um, uh, I love coffee, so and it's Lent, right? <laughs> but uh, still, uh, but I think this is one thing I try to say to people is to, uh, you're going to like what you see uh, because there is no distractions. You can um, kind of flow uh, through the different groups as you wish. And uh, all of us are producing content on a regular basis. I know I just posted four videos from a Lenten series that I gave with Patchwork Art Ministries and uh, shared those and uh, share a few uh, Bishop Sheen videos from time to time. So uh, I'm, I'm really happy for you, Cherbel, for uh, developing this mighty network and uh, calling it your own, calling it the Perusia world. 
and uh, would encourage everyone. And we'll put this in the show notes too. Uh, we'll give you the links to um, to visit and to join. And as I said, it's absolutely free. So um, I always think salvation's free and uh, proves your world should be free too. So, and it is. So uh, very good on that. Uh, but, you know, thinking of your networks, I mean, uh, there has been a very good following uh, along your Perusia On Demand page, and that uh, I call it the Catholic Netflix of Perusia World. And so uh, it's nice to uh, pay, you know, a subscription fee. It's a very small, $10 Australian, and I think that's $7 American. Uh, and wow. yet there's so many uh, resources, and uh, from Dr. Scott Hahn, Steve Ray, uh, a great list. And so uh, it's the, called the Perusia On Demand um, section of your apostolate. And I know you have a store and I know you have so much, but uh, again, I know you're always adding content to your um, catalog of, uh, of uh, I want to say, of, of um, true wisdom. <laughs> you know, I want to say something, not worldly wisdom, but uh, godly wisdom. So uh, how is that going? Like, again, I know that you you're always adding to Perusia and um, I believe you have an academy that you're working on. So yes. uh, tell us how things are going because you're, you're, you're a master builder and you're always adding to Perusia. So um, I'm sure there's other things coming down the pipe besides the Lenten pilgrimage. So uh, maybe you can share a few things with us. Yeah, thank you. I mean, the whole purpose of all these programs and initiatives and, and the having a focus is to really reach people in their busy lives, wherever they're at. So, you know, it's very interesting uh, when I've seen out there some great apostolates doing um, really specialist work where, where you have uh, apostolates that are great on TV and then that's what they specialise in with, with free content online or on TV or radio um, apostolates or there's podcast apostolates that do that or there are great bookstores um, and, and then there might be um, great uh, teaching apostolates that teach have institutes behind them and things like that. And we've sort of sat back and enjoyed learning from all of these great apostolates. And over the years, just building these relationships with these very powerful communicators, um, some of the most powerful presenters of the faith uh, on the planet. And they've moved me, rocked my world. And, and I just wanted to share this. And it was just over time building those relationships, those friendships, that the resources would grow, our partnerships would grow. And we'll start to really see what doors open, what doors close. And our Lord was really showing us which way to go. And, and, uh, and he made it crystal clear. If a door closed, it's, it's his will to say, don't go down that path. It's not your calling. But other doors that opened were certainly lighting the way of where we need to go. And, and so from, from articles, we have blog posts now. We call the Narrow Gate series to then the Peruse Your Podcast, which is a weekly free in, uh, show that we have interviews with guests. And then it grew um, Peruse Your Study Groups that have been uh, out there in the parishes and now we're doing them on Zoom and, and we've got people, a global audience now doing them online. And then uh, the Peruse Your World, of course, is now the social media answer. Um, and we are working. Now, you did say um, uh, we've also got the Peruse Your Pilgrimages and, and that's all that and the Peruse Your Events. And so the, the name Peruse Your gets used, and, which literally means uh, the presence, the real presence or the coming the presence that's about to come. So it's Jesus Christ, uh, his second coming we're preparing for. And, and there's that, that presence as well, the Eucharistic presence that we are preparing. Um, and the goal is uh, to teach people wherever they're at in their spiritual journey. Some people uh, are still questioning whether God is real. And so how do we reach those people? There are some people who believe that there is a God, but not sure if the Catholic Church is the right faith or not. So how do we reach those? There are some, some who say they're born Catholic, they're going to die Catholic, but they don't agree with everything the church teaches. And so how do we help those people? Um, and there are many that are, embrace the catechism and embrace the church teaching, but they just want to go deeper in theology, philosophy, and history. So we're now sort of following this journey, and we've gone on a journey ourselves, and, and now we're ready to take it to the next level, and that's where the Prusy Academy is coming in. Um, and now we've, we've, again, just on the back of these great relationships, praise be to God, uh, we've asked some of the world's best uh, presenters to just share one course. And we're doing now uh, an online academy that, again, is available worldwide. Uh, it'll be launched in late April, um, early May, and that's when we're hoping to then announce to the world that this will be available. But so, just to give you a bit of a teaser, some of the speakers include um, Dr. Scott Hahn and Dr. John Bergsma, Dr. Edward Shree, uh, Deacon Harold Burke-Sivers. We've got our very own doctors, uh, Andrew Wood, uh, Robert Haddad, 
Paul Morrissey, um, Father John Flutter, and Jeremy Bell. Uh, there's, there's a range of, of great presenters. And, and Christopher West on Introduction to Theology Body. And what we're doing is uh, 12 hours. Each course is going to be 12 hours. And you have to do 12 of them at least to get a certificate. And it's a certificate for mission. Um, I'd love to come on and, di- and sort of explain further, maybe on another occasion. But for now, please, I invite your listeners and viewers to, to pray for that as we hope this will help raise leaders uh, for the next generation. And we need, we need people out there really uh, discovering their calling as an apostolate and, and learning the faith, going deeper, building their relationship with God, and hopefully then sharing that with the world around them. So look out for that. So there's always something brewing and we're always busy. Um, and I, I praise God, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do anything else. I feel like I tell my wife, you know, it doesn't feel like I'm going to work. Uh, I get up and I love what I do. And I, I look forward to, to, to the next thing on because I'm just doing what I love right now. And, and it's so great to, to see so many, uh, fruit, so much fruit coming out of, out of this work. So as long as there's fruit, uh, we'll keep going. Amen. Amen. I love it. My work is play. I've been uh, yes. playing. <laughs> I mean, uh, and again, I share your joy. I just wake up every day and say, okay, Lord, what do you got today? What do you got today? So uh, I always just say, you know, uh, this is camping. <laughs> this is camping. Uh, our true home's in heaven. And uh, yes. again, this uh, journey that we're on. Uh, so let's be happy campers. Let's be happy campers. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's it's true what you're saying about education. And, um, you know, the I'm very excited about the Academy because, you know, I'm, I'm starting to meet with Catholics um, on a regular basis. And uh, they all kind of say, you know, I wish I would have learned more when I was younger. Uh, we always say that education is wasted on the youth. You know, <laughs> we wasted <laughs> on the youth. But I think as we mature, we have this um, desire to learn. And uh, that's what I've loved about uh, your Perusia on demand. I can watch shows and lessons uh, at my pace, at my pace. Uh, but still, I think in the back of my mind, I'm saying, I would like to have an accredited course that's affordable, that will mm-hmm. truly help me in my faith. And I remember meeting with uh, Terry Barber back in 2014. Wow. Uh, Terry Barber is a good friend of mine. And of course, he's a good friend of yours. And, uh, you know, we were talking about apostolic outreach. And uh, Terry had said to me, you know, the key to uh, everyone who is aspiring to, uh, you know, to be a lay evangelist or to work in a parish, uh, it's education, education, education. You may not be able to go back and get a master's degree at a university. Uh, it's just too expensive. And sometimes you're in that, um, I just want to say, state of life where you're married with children and you're working your 50 hours a week. And so uh, going back to school um, you know, at a university or a college is just almost impossible. Uh, but you can enroll in the academy and take the courses at your leisure and receive that accreditation. Um, and it is a great education. So um, I am looking forward to the academy opening up because there's many of us that uh, know that uh, to be effective communicators and to uh, present ourselves in the church, it's nice to say, I have studied with this group and have received this, uh, you know, diploma or certificate. So uh, education, education, education. And um, Amen. yeah, so again, we'll have you back Good on point. Hungry for More for an update there. But uh, for now, we're going to get ready for the Lenten pilgrimage with Steve Ray and your many guests that, uh, again, you've brought on board. And, uh, you know, as I said, yours truly will give a presentation. I won't uh, share what it is. I'll let you, I'll let you uh, find out. Uh, you know, during the pilgrimage, but uh, let's just say something that has to do with Fulton Sheen. So, uh, <laughs> and what he taught me, what he taught me. So it's all good. Uh, you know, Charbel, I tell you, our time flies by when we do these shows. And so, um, again, is there anything we missed? Anything you want to share uh, with our audience before we um, close in prayer? So, yeah, again, I, I realized I didn't answer your question about Perugia on Demand. And so <laughs> okay. that is going really well. Um, 500 videos are up there at the moment. And, uh, on the man is like, I guess, think of it as a Netflix and um, iTunes combined, where in iTunes you could you could purchase and rent a, a, a movie, um, but you can't stream it. Um, and Netflix, you, you have the streaming service. So imagine those two services in one platform. And that's what uh, Perusia on Demand is. It's got 
uh, these videos that are up there where it allows you to purchase as a one-time purchase, um, in some cases rent, um, and then um, in all cases uh, there's also the streaming uh, offer as well where you can just pay a, a low fee of $7 US a month and uh, you'll get access to all of the videos and every single month we're adding content to it. So, And all these pilgrimages, by the way, what happens is they're free uh, for the duration of the pilgrimage and once it's over, people who want to have more access to the, the videos can go on Perusia on Demand. All the subscribers and donors get uh, ongoing access to that so they'll never lose access. Um, and so there's 500 videos right now we were amazed when we, when we saw that stat. We've got all of the um, conferences up there. We've got lots of talks, documentaries, some movies. It's growing and growing. So Unplanned is on there and there's a few others about to come on. And um, Scott Hahn videos and, and you, the, the works, all the great uh, presenters of our face. So use this again as a, as a, as a way to sort of teach yourself, uh, learn self-learning at your own pace. But so many um, topics are in there. So uh, check out Perusia On Demand. You, you just go to our main website and you'll look at uh, in the menu bar at the top and it's got on-demand video and click on that and you can see um, all of that. There's a free trial for, for seven days where it allows you to sort of watch all of it. If you want to binge, watch them in seven days, you can do that. Um, but you have uh, free access to be able to at least explore and look at it. And, and through the Lenten pilgrimage, you're going to get free access anyway to that. And there's a few other um, series in there that are for free as well, just so people can get familiar with the platform um, very excited about how that's going. And um, yeah, there's, there's quite a few hundred that are subscribed and that's growing as well um, uh, each week. So please uh, take advantage and check that out. Very good. Yeah. So perusiamedia.com. And yes. again, there is the on demand feature. And you'll find the Perusia World um, uh, tab there too that you can then sign up that's for right. the Mighty Network. And uh, yes. you can find, find me that. on find me on the mighty network i mean you can find me on hungry for more in the fiat ministry network but it's nice to you can find me also on uh the perusia world uh, again mighty network so uh you'll of course I encourage you to join and again we'll put all of the uh, uh different um uh, features uh, here in the show notes so uh if you forgot uh, something Again, it's in the show notes. So uh, again, we we don't want to leave you behind. We want to bring you along uh, for this journey. All right, everyone. Uh, thank you again for joining us uh, for this week of Hungry for More. And uh, thank you, Charbel, uh, for uh, being with us once again. So uh, my good friends, we're going to end with prayer as we always do. And we're going to call upon the intercession of the Venerable Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen to come and help us. So uh, please join me in prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Eternal Father, you alone grant us every blessing in heaven and on earth throughout the redemptive mission of your divine Son, Jesus Christ, and by the working of the Holy Spirit. If it be according to your will, glorify your servant, Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen, by granting the favor we now request through his prayerful intercession. And here we pray for our many intentions, but uh, most specifically, we pray for the apostolic outreach of Perusia Media, uh, that God will continue to bless their holy endeavors. And we make this prayer confidently through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Charbel, thank you for uh, joining us all the way from down under. And, uh, My again, pleasure. It's always good to have you here. So, uh, my good friends, uh, until next week, I would remind you to stay hungry, stay holy, and we'll see you next time on Hungry for More.